Okay, so in our previous videos about building the Ozona X pram, we stitched and fiberglassed the inside of the dinghy. Now, after installing flotation foam in the forward and aft seats, Michael valiantly sands the outside of the hull for about four hours to ensure a smooth surface. Previous steps to get us here, we went through and we added thickened epoxy to all of the spaces in between the chines and all of the uh, all of the zip tie holes that were used to line up the chines, making sure that those were fairly, pretty much as flush as possible. And in this case, they are. Everything is a nice, even surface. We want good adhesion with the laminated glass so that we don't have any voided areas, which could blister and cause problems in the future, uh, as well as it'll be easier to fare the hull if everything is good and smooth at this point. After our first pass, we had to go through and fill some of these holes for a second time. And then this whole chine, we pretty much needed to add a little bit more material for whatever reason. Uh, but the rest of them have sanded nice and smooth. Another thing that we're doing is we're gonna leave our bow and transom bright. It will still get laminated, but since we used a palm sander, uh, a random orbital for the larger sections, removing all of that excess epoxy. There are a little bit of artifacts from that. Uh, we went through and with a sanding block, which I don't, actually don't have here, and 220 sandpaper, we went and worked out those artifacts. There were very few, just pigtails. That happens when you get some dust caught in the sandpaper. We're gonna lay out all of our glass, pre-measure it, cut it into each section. The bow will get its own section of glass and the transom will get its own section of glass. What we're using for that is six ounce biaxial glass. This all comes in the kit, which is great. Since it's not wide enough to go from side to side, we'll obviously have to run the glass over the edge and we'll, we'll get it all lined up. It looks like we'll need about three sheets of glass to get the, the length of the hull, plus an additional sheet for the forward bulkhead and the aft bulkhead, or aft tra the transom. And then uh, we'll also, after we actually cut the boat in half, we'll lay glass on the bulkheads uh, where, the, where the two halves meet, but we're, that'll come in a later step. All right, so we have the hull laid out and glass. Uh, we ran into a pretty challenging situation. Both the transom and the bow pieces, we, as I had mentioned before, we kind of cut. Uh, we rolled out some epoxy and then laid the glass on top, which worked incredibly well. And we would highly recommend that process for those pieces, just given their vertical nature. They're also smaller, so they're easier to manage. However, we ended up not wetting out this large piece for the rear half of the boat. Overall, it went very, very well. Everything smoothed out fine, but we really struggled to get the top chines to lay flat. And because of that, and thinking about how well and easy the bow and transom went, I decided to urge Esther to roll out this section before we laid the glass, and that ended up being a really big mistake. Uh, it's really hard to move this big of a piece of fiberglass. It's getting wet and stuck and starting to accept epoxy, and it really made it difficult for us to lay this section down. Thankfully, in the end, we've gotten enough epoxy on it and we've got everything laid out really smooth so that it'll fare out well, but it was a struggle. So I would certainly not recommend wetting out these larger sections. The angles, the size, it's just, it's too much to do so efficiently. But again, bow and transom, I think it helps. These larger pieces, certainly not. Thank you.
second rug rail. Uh, we didn't have enough clamps to do both sides at the same time, so we started on the port side and laid up the starboard side. But getting here was kind of an adventure, so to kind of give an update on what we experienced, we attempted to lay on the epoxy and we used a squeegee to move the epoxy around. And then we took a foam roller and like rolled over that surface. And I believe what happened was the roller removed too much material because the roller foam was not fully saturated. So what ended up happening was epoxy likes to self level and if there's enough material there, you'll get a level surface. If there's a high spot, you might have a little bit of a high spot. But what we had was this kind of stretching that happened. Mm -hmm. So when it stretched, like the gaps in my fingers, we had little pools that were missing. And I, I kind of think that there was two reasons for that. First one being not enough material. We removed too much material by trying to roll it off. The second one being, it was kind of a warm time, uh, so the epoxy was a little bit, time of day, the week was warmer, so the epoxy was a little bit thinner, which allowed it to stretch more, but also we were dealing with high humidity. And the reason why I'm bringing up the humidity factor is not so much that it changed the cure of our epoxy, but what ended up happening was when we went to sand it, we had a lot of blush, which is the sticky, waxy surface that we had to scrub off with soapy water before we could sand. And we consulted with JF and consulted with FC or FGCI, which is the company that makes the epoxy, and found out some information about it. JF recommended that we sand it back to fairly smooth without getting into the glass layer and then recoating with a couple of layers of epoxy, which thankfully when we came back to redo, armed with the knowledge that we probably removed too much material and also the uh, serendipitous fortune that it was about between 55 and 60 degrees the day that we put on both. We ended up putting two coats on, which made the epoxy thicker and less likely to stretch. Uh, so what we ended up doing is we used the squeegee still and Esther went ahead and gave it a good, fairly even coating with the squeegee. And then I went back through with a chip brush, a wet, very wet chip brush and kind of tipped out any high spots. And, and basically we kind of painted the epoxy around to get it nice and smooth. And we're really happy with, with how that turned out. We're gonna use this pull saw, Japanese style pull saw and uh, trim, trim back these ends of the rub rail so they're largely flush. Uh, and then we'll do some shaping later with the rasp and some sanding to give it a, a really nice shape. So I'm just gonna follow the shape of the hull just to get a rough cut with the pole saw. Uh, and then once that's done, we're gonna flip the boat over because we've got a pretty cool thing to do which is, it is time to saw the bow in half. <laughs> spent all of this time constructing the boat only to yesterday to take a saw to it and cut it in half and now today we've gone through and drilled ho holes in the boat so that we can install the skeg. Uh, one of the reasons why we had to wait as we noted on the drawing to do this until after the boat's been cut in half is because you can see here that the skeg overlaps the two hulls. Um, so one of the things that we're going to do first before we actually install this is we're going to do another weird thing, which <laughs> is drill a hole right here or somewhere thereabouts in the base of our boat so that we can route out the centerboard uh, trunk. <laughs> 
so that when we install the skeg, we can fit the two halves of the hull together. Because really, we want the skeg to align with the centerboard and the centerboard trunk itself. So a lot of weird feelings of building a boat to cut it in half, to drilling holes in it, to <laughs> routing out a gigantic cavity. <laughs> but that's what we're doing. That's what we're supposed to do. It's yeah. going well. And it's going well. It just feels weird. That's yeah. all. After a ton of fairing and sanding, we used Interlux Perfection, Perfection Plus, and the Perfection Primer and Barrier Coat products. Applying two coats of both primer and paint and three coats of varnish or the perfection plus it took us roughly 127 hours to build and finish the ozana x pram which jf bedard estimates a build time of 100 to 150 hours to complete so we were right in the middle after all the hard work getting the boat in the water was such an incredible payoff we're really looking forward to all of the adventures that are still ahead of us and all of the wonderful places that we'll explore with our Rosanna Express. Does it float? I'd say. It rose pretty nicely too. <laughs> Spooly gooly.